Hello guys, welcome to Joe Celeb Wako, your number one celebrity talk show. It's your host King, and today we are crossing borders all the way to Gambia. I want to introduce to you Killer Ace, who is a rapper, an activist, and also a producer. I've seen what he does. He's a great guy. I'll let him introduce more so that you can get to know him. Welcome to the show. What's yeah, up, thank bro? you so much, bro. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. My name is Ali Cham. Yeah. They call me Killer Ace. Mm -hmm. Killer on the mic, Ace and Rap. I'm from the Gambia, West Africa, the smallest land in mainland Africa. Yeah. You know, and basically, you know, I'm a rapper that love hip hop. Um, I grew up listening to hip hop, loving hip hop, yeah. and also, you know, love channeling my music. You know, for speaking up for the people mm -hmm. and also representing the people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, I'm an activist. We have a movement called Team Gum yes. which means believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And what the organization does is we basically use arts as a tool to engage the young people in the most important issues in society. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Hello guys, this is the episode, the episode, whichever place in the But uh, the main reason why we are here today is because we want to um, actually introduce you to the guys who sponsored the episode when it was the handbag store new anoma like it's really of good quality and there's a lot of actually variety that they have because i think there's another one here um, and then there's another one here you can actually order from them uh, like Personally, I'm a buy super angu, easy bag, you know, delivery on time, na niwazi. So I wanted to introduce the owner, and as a a little story behind the handbag store, and also, again, to na, to na appreciate sana the fact that we na support the episode ya Jose Lebuako, and we look forward to working with you for a long time. Karibu sana. Asante. What's your name? My name is Sandra, mm -hmm. and I'm the owner yes. uh, and founder. Mm -hmm of the handbag store. Mm -hmm. So we specialize with the ladies' handbags, mm -hmm. but now we also we also want to introduce men's bags as well. Yeah. And um, um, so the reason why I started up the business mm -hmm. uh, was because I wanted the Kenyan lady to be able to afford a chic and stylish handbag mm -hmm. at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. this, the reason being, uh, at times we found that the Kenyan market, yes, we, we can pr produce our own handbags. With, yeah. We, yeah uh, a lot of companies have, you know, uh, have their own, you know, products. And products, stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know, where they can be able to you know, make handbags from scratch. Yeah. But uh, it's not all women. Not all women can be able to afford those handbags. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is where I came in, and that is when I, I wanted to bring out, you know, a brand that sets up, you know, can be able to. Uh, fill that gap mm. yeah mm. and that means bringing up affordable and at the same time elegant and chic handbags yeah. at the same time mm. yeah mm. so that the Kenyan lady can be able to you know afford a nice classy and stylish and chic handbag at the same time because yeah. what has happened in this market mm. it's uh, yes you can find something affordable mm -hmm. but it's not quality yes. yeah so it will it won't be durable mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so that is where I come in, whereby I can be able to you know, fill that gap by bringing up, you know, uh, stylish, uh, elegant, affordable, and handbags of good quality. Yes. Yes. So we're also coming up with men's bags as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, and that's why we're here to now, you know, as we sponsor such, you know, Kenyan content, content and, and, and stuff. Yeah. It makes sense. We want to appreciate the day, the move, because I feel like, uh, you know, Biashara is not just about yourself. Yes. It's about minding other people. Yes, and solving mm. problems as well. Exactly. Yeah. And you're solving ours by making sure these people can see um, their, their favorite celebrities. Yes. Um, to na support. Make sure you subscribe to Kila Mahali mm -hmm. everywhere on, on all platforms, because uh, to, to me subscribe, me and me subscribe personally. Uh, we want to soon, uh, in the near future, very near future, our ladies, um, I'm a fan, madame, you guys will be winning handbags from uh, the hand, you know, the handbag store. The handbag store. Hey, company, correct. The handbag store. So, I'm going to win 
merchandise and and mtakom na win bag pia kutoka kwao at least uh, to make sure unaka look look iko fresh look ni safi ndio kabisa karibu sana thank you uh, thank you for having me as well thank you so much okay i, I really like um your project in yeah. terms of what you're doing also thank you uh, sir how did you how did you become a rapper and how did the music start well i mean i became a rapper since i, I was like 12 mm -hmm. technically right yeah you know, i grew up in new york mm -hmm. you know um, that's where i got my name ac killer ace from because mm -hmm. ali cham in new york they used to call me ac yeah and i turned it to ace which means number one. Mm -hmm. and my brother mata may so rest in peace mm -hmm. he was my bigger brother like an idol to me and he was somebody that i always looked up to because of his style his charisma mm -hmm. and he always used to have like the new hip hop cassettes back then mm -hmm. we had the boom boxes before the bluetooth speakers and stuff yeah he used to always play the new mixtapes mm -hmm. that used to come out you know the big elves the nas you know the mob deeps the big punish mm -hmm. you know of that era dmx's you know and i i was inspired by that and started you know being influenced by him and the music that he played mm -hmm. and started rapping yes so the name itself it came from like a battle back in school back in the days mm -hmm. when i was younger yeah and i won the battle so when i won the battle everybody that was there was like ace is the killer ace yeah, is the ace killer is the kill. <laughs> killer on the mic ace in rap nice. and that's where my music journey started off mm -hmm. so how's it been so far ups and downs mm -hmm. ups and downs you know so much challenges a lot of great moments as well mm -hmm. you know it's it's never been easy it's never going to be easy but we're still on the path and on the mission definitely but especially with the kind of music that we do mm -hmm. where the mainstream mm -hmm. dominates you know the media and the airwaves and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. we're still trying to fit in you know into that you know wider audience and market as well at mm -hmm. the same time okay you you've worked in a media house in Gambia um before yes and at the same time and i feel like you also done something to grow the artists in Gambia because you had a cipher yeah. maybe you can give the details to that yeah so with the um the cipher mm -hmm. which is also the radio program called the cipher yeah the cipher was created in 2012 mm -hmm. um and basically it's a platform it's an open mic platform mm -hmm. that's how it started yeah as an open mic platform that goes to different neighborhoods every month mm -hmm. and you know um presents hip hop showcase there mm -hmm. allowing the young people of that community to also you know um showcase their talents mm -hmm. and um from the cypher itself we, we also have the rap battle element which is a rap battle competition mm -hmm. in which participants and the winners are awarded okay with various prizes okay and then it also had a radio program mm -hmm. which is not no longer active mm -hmm. but we had a radio program on Afri Radio yeah which is called the cypher and we used to mix local hip hop with international hip hop okay and, and that was the first time i um played even a song from Kenya mm -hmm. an artist named Wawesh no oh, no nice. yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, with a song called Mujanja yeah the song was called yeah. Mujanja <laughs> you you uh, know yeah. some lyrics to the song yeah i remember the hook he was like DJ Watakuji Fanyan Mankofi yeah yeah something like that you know yeah, yeah. so yeah um and that was what the video was about as part of the cypher mm -hmm. establishment you know it was one of the products of the of the cypher uh, establishment uh -huh. and not only that we also use the cypher platform mm -hmm. since it's mostly free events in the streets yeah and it attracts masses mm -hmm. we usually use the cypher to advocate you know for social causes that we are um advocating for at that particular moment okay you know and i, I would say you based on now um using the cypher as a platform yes. to advocate for what uh, i feel like um, you fought for your country in a way yeah. musically absolutely uh, i know you went into exile yes. back in 2016 yeah uh, you went to senegal maybe you can you can tell us how how that happened because i know that was a challenge yeah so what happened was in 2015 mm -hmm. i released a song mm -hmm. okay now let me just give some context mm -hmm. gambia mm -hmm. uh for 22 years since 1994 we were ruled by a dictator okay who whose name was Yaya Jammeh mm -hmm. and he ruled Gambia with an iron fist yes people and citizens could not speak up mm -hmm. the media wasn't free mm -hmm. nobody could oppose him mm -hmm. if you dare try to you would be in serious trouble mm -hmm. which includes even probably being killed yeah you know so um 
I released a song called Kuboko Sigetegi Nancy Melmi, which means it's in Wolof language, mm -hmm. translating to if you're part of the herd of cows, yeah. then you should benefit or drink from the milk. Okay. It's a proverb. I don't know if the translation is proper, but it basically means that if you're part of something, then you have a say or you are entitled to benefit from that. Yeah. And in Gambia's context, we did not have our say. Mm -hmm. Everybody was silent. Everybody, you know, corruption was on the increase mm -hmm. and so many, you know, situations. And when I released the song, mm -hmm. it went viral, viral, viral. It, it became the anthem that the people were waiting for. Mm -hmm. And the security agents on the ground in the Gambia, you know, would try to arrest me and capture me. So I, I, I fled to Senegal with my family and stayed there for like two, two and a half years, you know, until after he was removed from power. Uh -huh. That's when I finally returned back to, to my country, the Gambia, yeah. in 2017. Yeah. So I had to go into exile in neighboring Senegal. Yeah. Senegal and Gambia is like Tanzania, Kenya, uh -huh. except Senegal speaks French and we speak English. Yeah. And it was the closest destination. So, yeah. Okay, nice. And, and uh, how was it? Um, how did that affect? the projects that you had going on back then? Yeah, because that's true. It, it affected a lot of my uh, projects, including my personal businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember the Cypher was doing very well. We had major endorsements and yeah. sponsorships from GSM companies. You know, mm -hmm. we were doing very well, mm -hmm. you know, as, 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 as the Cypher, mm -hmm. you know, was concerned. So when I, when I went into exile, mm -hmm. it, it killed the spirit of the Cypher mm -hmm. because I was associated with the cipher so much that it was risky for anybody to organize one or organize it whilst I was in exile. Mm -hmm. Even though the team yes. managed to do a few editions, like three of editions, mm -hmm. but um, the energy died down. Mm -hmm. Um, the funding and sponsorships from companies, yes. you know, they, they separated themselves because mm -hmm. they were scared of the political aspect mm -hmm. and, you know, that eventually, you know, um, made the cipher go down, mm -hmm. you know, as far as its um, height and, you know, its, its impact. Okay. Yeah. And how, which other projects do you have, did you have going on? Back then. Yeah, I mean, also personally, you know, I'm a cell phone dealer. I, nice. I, you know, I sell telephones and electronics and nice. stuff like. Right? Nice. So back then, I was I had a shop in the market, mm -hmm. and I was doing very well. Like you know, even though it was a small scale business, but I, I was taking care of myself, and it was growing. Mm -hmm. You know, as time was going, mm -hmm. so you know, I, I had to start fresh, mm -hmm. go to a country where you technically don't have no. Um, opportunity to, to to make money and stuff like that so mm -hmm. those are things that and also the moral social relationship mm -hmm. when i when i went into exile mm -hmm. a lot of people disassociated themselves with me uh -huh. out of fear yeah you know or out of just being suckers <laughs> yeah yeah you know so yeah a lot of people disassociated themselves with me you mm -hmm. know they didn't want to affiliate themselves because of the fair, mm -hmm. even artists that I've supported, you mm -hmm. know, family members, friends, mm -hmm. a lot of people like disassociated themselves with me, mm -hmm. even would come to Senegal and would not even inform me mm -hmm. because of the fair. So mm -hmm. the social side as well, you know, it, 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 it left me recognizing, you know, who's who and who's not. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, so hard, yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry for that. Yeah, it's all good. But uh, the movement, I think it paid off because uh, I feel like at the end of it, uh, somehow, Things went the way uh, I feel like majority of the people wanted because because the the president came out of, of power, of, of power, right? Yeah. So technically, yes and no. Mm -hmm. We did get the change, but then the new the president that replaced him mm -hmm. is applying the same laws, constitution. Mm -hmm. So there's no reform overall. Okay. The security sector is still the same security sector. Mm -hmm. The reform is limited in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Judicial reform is limited. We're using the same constitution that the dictator was using, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and the politics is still the same style. Yeah, you know, I have been arrested in this new government, taken wow. to prison, wow. you know, mm -hmm. speaking up and, and 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 being targeted by by the security, mm -hmm. amongst many other things. Activists are still being arrested for speaking up their minds. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you have to apply for a permit before you protest. If if you protest without the permit. They come in for you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things did not really change. Okay. In a nutshell. Okay. You know? Okay. So even though we have more freedom of speech and yes. nobody would kill you directly, mm -hmm. but if things continue like this, you never know, man. Yeah, true. But I feel like you've, you've done a lot because you've given back to the same people. Yeah. Uh, you actually came back and, and made a change mm -hmm. to, to, to the system yeah. in terms of how things were happening. How did you do that? 
Well, I mean, when I came back, uh, I still continued the course because we also have a movement, an organization called Bumso Boko. Yeah. And we also, that movement that speaks up and, and stands up for, against a lot of stuff. Mm. So even when I came back, police brutality was, mm -hmm. was, was still the same order of the day. Like yeah. I told you, there was no security sector reform. Yeah. So I was a victim of police brutality myself. Mm -hmm. I had a major issue with one of the police chiefs, mm -hmm. you know, because of the manner and the conditions that the detainees were held in when I exposed it in a song. Mm -hmm. I became a target. Mm -hmm. um, we also pushed for the constitutional review mm -hmm. uh, as part of one of the projects called Get Involved, mm -hmm. which um, was in partnership with the Constitutional Review Commission, mm -hmm. you know, to engage the Gambian population mm -hmm. on the drafting of the new constitution and how they can how they should be involved and have their say in it mm -hmm. so that was one of the great things that we've done mm -hmm. also we also have the Defadoi platform mm -hmm. which is called the enough is enough mm -hmm. in which you know sometimes we even go protest uh, just to speak up against things that are still in effect today that okay. we fought against for yesterday okay so those are some of the things that we do yeah you know um, on, a, on a regular basis mm -hmm. you know as, as a movement mm -hmm. still yeah. nice it's a good I feel like it's a good project yeah. given now that you're in Kenya what, what what do we what are we expecting Who, which guys are you working with well in Kenya you know I'm here sometimes temporarily yeah and you know I don't get the opportunity to come here as often as I want to yeah but you know off of the small times and periods that I've came here this is my second time here mm -hmm. you know I've managed to you know extend the network meet with various artists mm -hmm. in the industry yeah you know shout out to Lucy mm -hmm. you know um, I got um, I met with um, G Rongi, mm -hmm. you know, who's a good rapper, dope MC, mm -hmm. you know, and Black Jesus. Yeah. Also met up with Mandela, mm -hmm. you know, I met up with Mandela and, and, and Teardrops, yeah. you know, amongst the new school artists that are coming out. Mm -hmm. And I'm also open to working with more artists, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I also had the opportunity to meet um, uh, Guduku, mm -hmm. you know, who's also, you know, um, 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 a legend in, in, in the reggae side, mm -hmm. you know, so, um, and also Uncle Tabu, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah, who's a legend as well. Mm -hmm. so those are some of the people that I've met and trying to continue the relationship, build the relationship mm -hmm. and see what, what can be done. Okay. What what do we have coming next for Killer Is? Yeah, so I'm um personally I'm working on my next album. Mm -hmm. uh, Killer Manjaro is the title. Mm -hmm. And like I'm putting all of my all of my energy and effort into that. Okay. As it is a project that I've been working on for like almost a couple of years, almost three years now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just putting all my energy on the upcoming album, mm -hmm. Killer Manjaro. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Bro. Maybe Thanks you so can much. you can drop a verse for us today. I so yeah, what we're gonna do is I must see like the catalog, got a lot of stuff in the in the in the catalog, right? Mm -hmm. So Every day stress, yes, it leads to frustration. I'm walking down dirty roads which ain't got enough pavement. Waiting for a van, we don't have no bus stations. My peoples are working extra hard until their guts are aching. And at the end of the day, don't get enough payment. I'm feeling like we trapped in a shell like crustaceans. Thank you, bro. So make sure you watch this episode, subscribe to the show. You can also follow Killer Ace on social media. At Killer Ace One. Yes. K-I-L-L-A-A-C-E One. Yeah, on all platforms. Joseph Leboako, we are yeah. out. We are out. Thank you.